Four retirement rules of thumb debunked. Debunked. It's weird, actually, because I got this email from Schwab. It said debunked in the uh, the headline of the article they sent to me, at least in the email, the, the email um, subject line. But then we look at the article, and they don't say it here. So I don't know. So what was that about? I don't get it. But it did say debunked, and that's what we're going to use. Because anytime you use the word debunk, it's more uh, uh, clickbait. <laughs> Stupid. But for some reason, we're going to debunk you. And what the hell, where did debunking ever come in? Like, I get it, we're going to correct you all this, but this term debunking, it came out of nowhere. It's kind of weird, man. It's been around for a while. Oh, I debunked you, Scanlon. Oh. Anyway, so from Schwab, June 14th, 2023. Four retirement rules of thumb debunked. All right, let's see what we got here. Have you heard the one about the financial mysteries of retirement can be solved with a couple of easy to use calculations? Just save X percent of your income or take X percent of your 401k out each year and you'll be home free. It would be great if these rules worked. But such guidelines aren't particularly nuanced. It also doesn't help they're frequently misunderstood and applied incorrectly. Here we look at some of the most common ones and explain where they can go wrong. Save 10 to 15 percent of your income for retirement. I actually just sent an email out about this um, this early this morning that... Uh, Schwab is debunking and that we debunk Schwab's debunking because they're just this is just idiotic. Now I remind you, so if you like my email, you want to be on the email list, sign up for the doobie doo down below. And if you like what I do here and this this stuff is of value, buy me a cup of coffee. Right there, the doobie doo. Decaf. That's what I'm drinking some iced decaf, a little bit of whipped cream. Oh baby. All right. Save 10 to 15% of your income for retirement. The detail most people miss is that 10% savings rate, which includes any match from your employer, makes sense only if you start in your 20s and 30s. If you start later, you likely need to maintain your you likely need to save more to maintain your current standard of living. <laughs> so I'm 52. I'm supposed to be saving well over a third of my income <laughs> to maintain my standard of living. It's so idiotic, and I'll just share with you what I said in my email. Save uh, 40% of my income might be one of the dumbest things I've ever heard, and I'm from Maine. Uh, with our stupid governor up there, lots of dumb things up there. I'm in Georgia now. We still have an idiot down here, too, Brian Kemp, but he's not nearly as bad as that freaking idiot up there. All right, uh, the idea that your old buddy Josh needs to save 40% of my gross income to maintain my current standard of living is just stupid. I'm going to refer you to this book right here, right here. Spend till the end. I'll put a link in the show notes and you should get this. If you haven't got it yet, you're wrong. You're just wrong, dude. This will this will relieve your stress about retirement planning. I'm just telling you right now. And what uh, Kotlikoff and Scott Burns talk about here is consumption smoothing from page 104. Replace a race come to you courtesy of people who have their very best interests at heart. I love that. They have their very best interests at heart. Replace the race assumes spending on children continues after they leave the home. Assume spending on mortgages continue after they're paid off. Assume spending on education continues after children are out of school. Assumes no change ever in the household's demographic composition. I give you a link to my new book, Relax and Retire, which you should get as well. And that is in the Doobie Duke. How household composition changes a lot as you get older. Anyway, consumption smoothing. Um, what that simply means is uh, you, you just... You you spend more when you got kids when you got debt, and you spend less when you have no kids and have no debt. It's just that simple, dude. And as such, you don't have to worry like, oh my goodness, I'm supposed to be saving 20% of my income because well, you have so much in debt. How are you going to do that? You can't. And so what happens is you smooth the consumption relative to your net expenses. Net expenses is how much it actually costs to maintain your household. Once debts are paid, once the kids are out of the house, everything changes. And the fact that Schwab, Schwab doesn't get this is frustrating. You should save... 25 times your planned annual spending by the time you retire. <laughs> this is the, the let's see, the correlate where you, you switch it, uh, the inverse of the 4% rule. Uh, let's see. Uh, there is a 25 times rule for retirement savings, but it should actually be applied to how much you think you'll need for, just from your portfolio. I agree with that 100%. Okay, well, I completely agree with what they're saying here. You should have 25 times your planned annual spending. No, you should have 20. I, I hate, I'm not going to say you should have 25 times because it's stupid, but what the better would be, you should have 25 times what you need from your portfolio. I completely agree because if I have, if I have a 50,000 I need spending and 25,000 comes from Social Security, I don't need 25 times 50. That'd be just stupid. All right, anyways, keep us saying. 
So uh, you can use your gross annual income to measure your savings if you use, use a realistic multiplier. Keep in mind that targets listed below are aspirational, unlike those inspirational white guys, 50-year-old white guys who are you know, working for that uh, submarine thing. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the CEO who's out dead, RIP, brother, but F around and find out, man. He goes, I don't need any 50-year-old white guys. I need some inspirational people because you know, white men aren't inspirational. I'm inspirational. I'm a white guy. I'm a 50-year-old white guy. I'm inspirational. I talk to inspirational white guys all the time. So they're saying uh, multiple of gross income. So I need to be between five and seven times of my multiple of gross income. Uh, <laughs> so if you make $100,000, I need to have between five, basically 600000 bucks in my 50s. Yeah, that's just stupid. That's just stupid. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, the rule of thumb, the 4% rule. I've destroyed this a million times a Sunday, but let's just go with it. The actual rule suggests you add up all your investments during your first year of retirement and withdraw 4% of that total. In subsequent years, you adjust the resulting dollar amount uh, to account for inflation. By following this formula, you should have a very high probability of not outliving your money for 30 years. It's a good starting point, but we think we can actually be more flexible. In fact, with the right allocation, you may be able to withdraw more. All right, I don't have a you should have 100 minus your age in stocks when you retire. Yeah, that's always a pretty good rule of thumb. I've always liked that. Uh, this one can be fine starting point for someone with substantial assets and only needs to tap interest and dividends to fund their retirement. Other investors find they may need uh, more stocks in their portfolio. The idea here is to let your risk tolerance and risk capacity determine your allocation. Yeah, I don't have any qualm with that, but the idea that we need more stocks for more growth. Uh, what if the stocks don't grow their guy? Uh, the ch this chart right here gives us uh, some examples of how you should approach your allocation at different points of retirement. So your age, so they still got 50% stocks at age 70 to 79. Yeah, I, I don't have a qualm with that. They got uh, 65, 35, age 60 to 69. I, that's too aggressive right now. I mean, it might have been fine you know, a couple years ago when you weren't making any money on bonds. That's way too aggressive right now. I'd be, I would, I'd actually shift this over. Um, they got, uh, that's about 60, 40 cash, I guess. Okay. Yeah, still a little bit. 60, 69, I'm going 50, 50, dude. What I'm saying. 70, 79, I'm going 40, 60. And, uh, and 84, I stick at 40, 60. Bottom line, rules of thumb gain currency because they can cite them and there's no substitute for a financial plan. Yeah. All right. Anyway, that's not a bad article. I just, uh, the 4% rule is silly. I said a million times, the idea you're spending increases each and every year with inflation. Show me the, literally, show me the evidence of that. Haven't you seen the price of gasoline? Okay, so the price of gasoline is down now from what it was a couple weeks ago. Does that mean we can actually uh, spend more because of deflation? Haven't you seen the price of eggs? Again, the price of eggs, is that the only thing that inflation considers? No, what else does inflation consider? Uh, things like electronics. I mean, my goodness. You know, one guy was like, what was he saying? You have a price of new pickup truck, have you? I said, I haven't because I don't buy new pickup trucks. I don't. And so I try to drive mine to the ground. But when I do need to buy a vehicle, I buy it as any durable good, which is called cash flow, through cash flow. You don't budget that because you don't know when you're going to need it, man. You know what I'm saying? And so when you do comes time to, to, to need it, you, you budget through cash flow. But it's not inflation because inflation, as we've talked about in my book, Relax and Retire, what does inflation measure? It measures the change in the cost to maintain your standard of living. That's what it is. So I'm not buying a new car. So I, why would I measure that on an annual basis? The change in the cost of a new car, it makes no sense. Don't do that to yourself. It's dumb. Uh, the rule of thumb, 4%, we talked about that. You, know, you need seven to, what five to seven times your gross income. That's just freaking stupid, dude. Uh, your gross income has nothing to do with your retirement spending. Come here, baby. Pablo wants to say hello. Pablo wants to say hello. And if you like Pablo and you want to get him a cup of coffee, it's in doobie doo. Oh, look at that guy. Oh, hi, Beersley. So your income has nothing to do with your retirement spending. It just has nothing to do with it, especially if you're carrying debt, if you got kids. It's just, you know, we got braces coming out the way every, you know, we got freaking tuition, we got mortgage. All that stuff's going to be gone five years probably. Why would I, why would I need my gross income now as any indi indication at all about what my retirement spending is going to be? Yeah. All right. God bless. We'll see you guys. Thanks now.